outside of Africa, there's this narrative about how China is trying to colonize, recolonize Africa, um, which I think is quite a reductive statement. Um, and a bit rich, and, isn't I mean, it? <laughs> yeah, I was going to, like, interestingly, the people who are saying that are like Americans <laughs> and Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but honestly, um, there's, I, I feel that a lot of, a lot of people in Senegal in particular are kind of, um, they're actually open to the Chinese Senegalese relationship because um, China is investing a lot of money in Africa in general. Um, and as far as I'm aware, without the same amount of um, kind of neo-colonial strings that come with um, investment in infrastructure from European countries, for example. So Senegal has a really close relationship with um, France being a former colony and France actually has a kind of a monopoly on a lot of the industries in Senegal. Um, and the, the currency in Senegal is, uh, it's pegged to the euro and a lot of the, I think half the reserves are kept at the French treasury in France. And um, French companies get a certain amount of, um, they get a, like a first priority on, on bids for new infrastructure projects and stuff like that. So there's also, British involvement in Senegal because they recently discovered oil there. So obviously BP are all over that shit. Um, and it just doesn't seem, there's so much kind of um, conditional history, historical agreements and, and like the contracts that are made between um, European powers and Senegal, they, I don't know, they just never really feel like they're being completely made on even ground because they're mm. not it's 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 a power dynamic that's so um it's so marred by the colonial history that i feel it's very difficult to have a kind of um you know like an even relationship whereas china and the investment from china and the relationships between a lot of west african governments anyway and china um started on more of a clean slate so i think it's really reductive to say oh china's come china wants to colonize africa um mm. you you see chinese presence in um you know big projects and stuff in in senegal but you don't see the the chinese culture hasn't kind of infiltrated senegalese culture in the same way that its former colonial um former colonizer has and it's just it's just not the same so I, I, I'm a bit kind of wary when people talk about that kind of stuff yeah I've only heard that narrative just and also because I was living in America for quite some time so so that narrative is very prevalent in the U.S. and here I guess but um from people that are that I've spoken to from Africa or from Asia that's not their perception of what's going on so it's always interesting to see such different um, viewpoints. And I guess that kind of, you know, like what you were saying about the colonial mentality towards um, what, negotiations, you know, is just, I think that's the thing where when we talk about identity politics or we talk about racism or accurate representation, that's the thing that really, like to me, that's, you know what I mean? That's the, the reason why accurate representation matters and you know it's like so much more than just um I don't know if someone you know if someone asks you if you uh, make fur that is one thing but then on the other hand you know it's an annoying thing that we have to deal with but on the other hand when you're actually um it allows that this sort of racism allows you to actually go into a country and just completely exploit an entire country and people and, mm. and like suffer no repercussions for it because they're not even expected to be equal, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that um, so often the conversations, like you said, all the people talking about how Africa is colonizing, sorry, how China is colonizing Africa, they, that's a, it's a kind of, very xenophobic diatribe that tends to come from the pens of Western writers. It's very, um, it's like racism cloaked in racism. So it's mm. like the, 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 the Europeans are saying, oh, well, we, we need to protect you from this big bad wolf China because, you know, they, um, you know, they do everything in a, um, a very dominating kind of way. Uh, we'll help you, you know, we'll, we'll keep our relationships. Mm. And it's kind of like you're, um, 
continuing the subjugation uh, in, a, in a kind of very neo-colonial way, but also being quite xenophobic towards this idea of China. And I think people just, I think it's exacerbated by the, the rhetoric of people like Donald Trump, you know, China, China, just talking okay. about China as if it's this kind of like one big block mm-hmm. um, that's taking over the world. And I think that what people don't do is read opinion pieces by Africans. There are plenty mm. of really good African journalists and thinkers and writers who, and business people who write about this kind of stuff all the time. Mm. Um, and usually the people who drop things like, oh, well, China's taking over Africa are people who probably have never read anything written by either an African writer or a Chinese writer about that relationship. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a very good um, newsletter that Quartz puts out every week um, by Quartz Africa. And it's like a roundup of um, stuff going on in the business uh, politics and tech world in Africa, which is really good. And it takes like 20 minutes to read. I think that there's just outside of people who have business interests or work interests in Africa, I just think that from the UK in particular, there really isn't much of an interest um, people don't really follow what's going on. They don't mm. you know, know very much. And I think that like with a lot of things, these attitudes stem from ignorance. Yeah. And also like when you say, um, when you say like read things from, uh, read African voices or, or listen to African voices, I also get the sense that you're not saying read them in The Guardian or CNN or or The Telegraph or something like that. It's because a Western newspaper will always uphold, uh, you know, the examples of of Africans who are saying what they want to what they want to hear. So I I find it really interesting that you that you were able to drop some resources on on, you know, places we can go. Yeah, 